Get ready for fun. Get ready for laughs. Get ready to have a great day. It's Great Day Houston. And now, here's your host, Deborah Duncan. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Great Day Houston. It is Medical Monday, and this is Heart Month. As we know, there are all kinds of things that can lead to the malfunction of your heart, diabetes, certain drugs, AFib, and a new study looks at how migraines may be a risk factor for heart disease as well. Plus, as Americans spend more and more time on their smartphones, what does science say now about a possible cancer link? Let's find out in Medical Hot Topics. And on our panel this morning, we have Dr. William Ross Brown, who's an interventional cardiologist, Dr. Terry Alani, family and cosmetic Dennis and Dr. Robert Palmer, a head and neck surgeon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, so, as if we need something else to be a risk factor for heart disease, because it is the number one killer of men and women around the world, it says migraines could be a risk factor for heart disease as well. Uh, women with migraines and people with migraines with aura have the greatest risk. That's right. This was a fairly large study out of Denmark that showed an association with migraines and a higher risk of heart disease. Um, it's interesting, it's an observational study, so it's important to remember that, that it, it, it needs, definitely warrants more study, but it is an interesting association. Yeah, all right, um, but can we also look at just any kind of stress that you would put on the body? If your heart is teetering anyway, right. any kind of stress on the body could probably trigger a heart attack? Well, recently we've been talking about flu a lot, and that's a generalized inflammation state, and so and any stress on the body can increase blood pressure and increase the risk of heart yeah. problems. And, and maybe with that study, uh, maybe Maybe it is a wake-up call for people that do have intense migraines, maybe to seek preventive measures and see a cardiologist and just be tested. Yeah, yeah. And even things like, uh, okay. we were talking about, you know, there are, um, around the holidays, between November and December, there are a lot of folks who have heart attacks because it's induced by the food that we eat. Right. It's all about risk factors, really. Do you have family history, high cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, yeah. and any additional stressor like alcohol or, or dietary changes can really... So to your heart. point, make sure your heart is healthy. Exactly. Yeah, go yeah. get checked yeah. to make sure right. it's healthy. Right. All right. Uh, the difference between cold, sinus infection, flu, all of them kind of share some symptoms. And a lot of times in the beginning, people try to figure it out. They're thinking, is it the flu? No, it probably it's just a cold. Uh, maybe it's not a cold. Maybe it's the flu, right? And then maybe it's sinus issues. They're all interrelated. I mean, basically, you don't get a sinus infection unless you have bad allergies or you have a head cold. So when you get a head cold, which is usually viral, if it lasts for several weeks, then you probably did get into a sinus infection. But the symptoms are somewhat the, the same. But most people just don't get a sinus infection. They get it as a result of having a head cold or the flu or they have bad allergies. Because of plumbing issue, basically. Exactly. It's just a ventilation problem. So what would you say, because we get a lot of patients, first of all, if you have a the flu, Please do not come see the dentist. Yes. Exactly. That's all I can or, tell or you. Or have a cold. Everybody Please do not come see the dentist. They're not a yeah. view. But my question is, you see so many people that have a head cold or whatever, and they automatically decide they need to be on antibiotics. What What's the answer uh, to that's that? That's a big problem. I discourage it. You know, it should be a protracted problem, and then you should be evaluated where you can tell if it is truly a bacterial infection. If you go on antibiotics for a viral infection, it's not really going to help you. And it has so many... Side effects. It yeah, and the CDC your, was saying one of the mess big, up your GI tract. Yeah, and the CDC terrible. was saying one of the biggest issues they have is how many times people are over medicating with antibiotics, and so when you really need those antibiotics to work, they're not working. But does exactly. it usually go away on its own? Because I was very sick in January, and I actually went to the doctor, and they did put me on antibiotics because they thought I had a secondary sinus infection. But are you saying that that sinus infection ultimately will just go away without antibiotics? In most cases, people yeah. get into chronic sinusitis, which is where they have changes that never go away or they have recurring acute episodes which we classify as chronic sinusitis. But basically most people who get a sinus infection, even if they didn't go on antibiotics, will eventually get better. It may take a while. So I'm not opposed to antibiotics once you find out and can you feel safe that you've diagnosed a bacterial infection. Right, that infection. it actually is an infection exactly. that you yeah. And is it too late to get a flu shot? No. Okay. Yeah, it's never, apparently it's never too late to get a flu shot, especially this year. And I would add, too, to be careful about over-the-counter cold medicines because they can interact with heart medicines and heart conditions. Yeah, yeah, because that, and that's a big issue. A lot of times what we do is we grab the one that has all the symptoms on it and just say, okay, that one is probably the right. most effective and, and right. take that. And then if it's not working 45 minutes later, we'll take another one, right? Well, the, the problem with over-the-counter, they always put a decongestant with mm. the antihistamine. 
and decongestants are essentially cardiovascular drugs. They increase your blood pressure and so on. And you can't use those much longer than four to five days. Yeah, which the important thing, go ask the pharmacist. I think a lot of times people forget that the pharmacist actually knows what those interactions could be, sure. and they're there to help you, even with the over-the-counter stuff. Walk up and say, hey, look, these are my symptoms. Here's what I'm taking otherwise. What should I do? Pharmacists right. are very smart. Yeah, yeah. yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, up next, could Botox stop teeth grinding? Botox is a miracle. Botox is all kinds awesome. Of we all love bo Botox, all the ladies out there, but absolutely. I just get it for teeth grinding. <laughs> absolutely, yes. It's safe and it's effective. We do it in our office. Um, what you try to do is you inject the Botox, it's painless, into the two major muscles that uh, clench when you grind. It's your masseter muscle and your temporal temporalis mm -hmm. muscle. And so unlike a night guard, which actually just keeps you from grinding, the Botox actually addresses the problem. So yes, it, it works wonderfully. Yeah. So if we come into your office, months. can we get like a little right here? And Absolutely. A, and a little right here too? Absolutely. We have some extra left uh -huh. over there. All right. Uh, it seems like everything causes cancer or heart disease, right? And so is there a cancer link with cell phones? There's a study that tested cell phone radiation on rats, and they found a very weak link between cell phones and cancer. So kind of reaffirming what I think we've heard before in in certain things. Deborah, I think that you have a higher chance of having a car accident, talking on your cell phone and texting, mm -hmm. than you do getting cancer from a cell phone. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, and finally, I love this. This is another study that keeps coming up for every single ailment there is. Could two drinks a day help fight Alzheimer's? And could drinks help fight um, heart disease? All those we, types of things. We do see a connection between alcohol and the prevention of heart disease, of course, in moderation. Um, I think overall, when we're talking about a general inflammatory stress on the body, then um, alcohol has been shown to minimize that. Okay, it's like two drinks a day, they're saying, could increase the function of glymphatic system, which removes waste products from the brain. So uh, <laughs> drink up, people, but I think it's all in moderation, as <laughs> moderation, you say. That's yeah, right. that's the key right there. All right, thank you all very much.